Hey, on today's show, pass all the offerings for the Disney's Hollywood studio, jazz in the Disneyland Paris, and is Mr. Lassiter coming back, and so much more on this week's show of the Disney Parks Podcast. Welcome to the Disney Parks Podcast with your hosts, Tony Castlenova from DisneyByTheNumbers.com and Park Hopper John from WDWParkHoppers.com. Keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the podcast at all times. And get ready for the Disney Parks Podcast. We know that coming to Walt Disney World can be very overwhelming with all the fast passes, the dining reservations, even getting from attraction to attraction can be extremely overwhelming. But we've got a friend that can help you make your next trip to Walt Disney World even more magical. It's Ramon and Theme Park Concierges. You can visit themeparkconcierges.com or call them at 407-257-9973. Ramon and his amazing team of VIP concierges will take care of you from the moment you arrive at the park until the moment you go back to your resort. They can take care of you for a four-hour time slot or a full day. It all depends on what you need. They can take care of your dining reservations, your fast passes, and even make sure that you find even more magic hidden in the Disney parks. Well, contact our friends, themeparkconcierges.com, or call 407-257-9973 and tell them your friends over at the Disney Parks Podcast sent you. And now, Disney Parks Podcast News. All right. There is a lot of stuff happening at uh, the studios, and apparently they want to send more people there before June. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> they want to see how many people they can fit in the park, kind of so they can estimate what's going to happen on June 30th, I think. Uh, so beginning on May 18th, uh, annual pass holders can enjoy several exclusive things at the Disney Hollywood Studios. One, and the first time I read this, I was like, early access? Uh, it's early access to purchase a Toy Story Land magic <laughs> band. No. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, annual pass holders can visit uh, Mickey's uh, of Hollywood or the Celebrity 5 and 10 or Keystone Clothiers or Once Upon a Toy at Walt Disney uh, World Presents to purchase the official Toy Story Magic Band before it becomes available to guests on June 30th. I may have to get one. I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, I think you need one because it's so you. I mean, anybody who's watching this, all they can do is, like, see behind you. It's a sea of Toy Story. Yeah. (laughs) It would be like if they were doing a Beauty and the Beast land. For you. I would have to have. Right. Yes. Right. Or Ratatouille. I would absolutely have to have that magic band. Well, that's coming to uh, Paris and Epcot, so you never know. Uh, hey, double character dining discounts for annual pass holders can receive a limited time 20% discount on all meal periods at Hollywood and Vine. And listen, I was there, and they are crazy to charge that amount for for a buffet. I I, I was shocked. I, I forgot what it was. It was, it was like 100 bucks. I think it was 50 bucks a, a person. So to get 20, It's been a long time since I've been there. Yeah. Uh, since I put the characters in, I think I have to take up a pass. Uh, it's just too much. Uh, hey, daily viewing of The Incredibles 2 sneak peek from 9 to 10, 9 a.m. to 10, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m.? Annual mm-hmm. pass holders invited to attend the annual pass holder only viewing of The Incredibles 2 sneak peek at Walt Disney Presents. And for you Donald Duck fans, the Donald Duck Summer Magnet uh, gift. Annual pass holders can stop by Mickey's of Hollywood, Celebrity 5 and 10, Keystone Clothiers, Once Upon a Toy, or the Walt Disney World uh, Presents to receive their compl- complimentary gift, a summer-themed magnet featuring, for the first time in forever, Donald Duck. I swear okay. their Disney bought a magnet company. <laughs> right. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I will bring you something, whatever you want, like, that is Nashville, like, 
a natural thing, whether it be mm-hmm. beer or some kind of candy or whatever, if you can get those for out on LA. Oh, I can get those. Yeah, when we go this weekend, I'll just I'll keep going to the stores and get a whole bunch of them. I'll give them out as gifts on the show. <clears throat> Because they don't ask for a, uh, your ID, and if they do, they don't do anything. Oh, like, you know, I mean, one woman asked, and I showed it. Another woman didn't ask and gave me two. Well, well all right. Oh, nice. If you're going to give me two, I'll take two. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah. see, we haven't been able to get them because we haven't been down. Yeah. We got the, you know, we got the ones for Christmas. Right, right. I think- but the other ones, we haven't been able to... Yeah, I think, with our work schedules, I have John, not been able to make it John down as often one. as we usually do. John has one for you from the flower. <gasps> oh, nice! I think yeah. So I'll let him surprise you with that. <laughs> 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 uh, I am sure the magnets are while supplies last, or until June 29th, uh, and everything else is till June 29th, or while supplies last. I, I, you know, it would be funny if they ran out of the magic bands before June 30th, if, if all the passes oh, yeah. gobble them up and. There was none left, but I highly doubt that. I'm sure they ordered like two billion of them. <laughs> you know, so. All right. What else we got going, Kristen? So we have lineup revealed for Disney Loves Jazz at Disneyland Paris. Tickets are now on sale. So this September, the musical genre jazz will take over Walt Disney Studios Park at Disneyland Paris. During a nighttime event called Disney Loves Jazz, you can visit the Jazz Loves Disney in concert, meet jazzy Disney characters, and enjoy the park and its attractions in a festive way. Hmm. Which sounds very interesting to me. I wonder how popular this is going to be. Performing during the night, Mm -hmm. some of the artists include China Moses, Hugh Colton, Miles Santco, Robin McKeel, Ben I Uncle Soul. Yeah, I don't know. As well as more. Um, Moses and Colton are on the Jazz Loves Disney album, so if you have one of those, you, you may recognize their name from that. Uh, they do have two different types of tickets that you can get there's a standard and a premium. The standard ticket provides you access to the event, attractions, and character meeting greets. It is 49 euros, so that's roughly about 58 U.S. dollars. The premium ticket uh, gives you the Jazz Loves Disney in concert show. Those tickets are 69 euro, roughly 82 U.S. During the event, Rendezvous Gourmand event is running at La Place de Remy. Mm. This is a small French equivalent of the Epcot International Food and Wine Festival. Mm. Uh, for those of you that want to enjoy this, it's going to be on September 29th, 2018, from 8 p.m. to 1 a.m. You can purchase the tickets through the official website of Disneyland Paris. Do you think, first of all, it's like, France, a jazz city. I don't, I don't, I don't know how that's going to go. Yeah, would something like this uh, work well in you know Disneyland or Disney World? Do you think? I would think most likely Disney World, mm, like American Garden, because Disney. you know you think of jazz and you're thinking of the South. Mm. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I can nope. see it like in New Orleans Square or Disneyland. That uh-huh. Would, that would make sense. And they do have some jazz bands that kind of walk around or stand. But I don't see people wanting to pay that yeah. Yeah. who live in California. Right, right. Well, maybe if it's one of these very popular jazzy people. They might. If you like jazz. Yeah, if you like jazz. I'm sure there are people. Who likes jazz? James Spader. Uh uh, goes to jazz bars in New York City. He said, "Really? He, yeah." He said he talks about them on the Jimmy Fallon show. And I think he took Jimmy once too. So now Jimmy, interesting. Yeah, Jimmy's into it. Yeah, I don't know. It's okay. I can tolerate it. It's not bad. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a big jazz person, anything yeah. like that. But yeah, 
I mean, most types of music I can either enjoy or tolerate. The only thing I can say that I just can't, cannot get behind is like bluegrass. That, oh, no. Hmm. Some but see it, that I could see you not minding bluegrass yeah. because you really like country music. Yeah, see, I I don't mind some bluegrass. You know, if it's like the folksy kind of bluegrass, I I kind of uh-huh. I kind of can I can tolerate that. I can listen to it. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm not a country music person, oh, so yeah. no, that's my that's my jam. <laughs> I, I always uh, I always like hearing about people losing their car, or their wife, and their kids. Um. Hey, last week's trivia question was, in Sleeping Beauty, Kristen, maybe you can answer this. In Sleeping Beauty, what was the name of Maleficent's pet raven? Coco, Coco. Diablo. Very good. Very, very good. Uh, And Carrie is our winner this week. So, Carrie, it's uh, in the mail, as we'd like to say. All right, this uh, I I I hope everybody can get this because you've probably seen this movie eight hundred times or at least your kids have. In the movie <laughs> Frozen, how many brothers does Hans say he has? If you know the answer, send that to the Disney Parks Podcast at gmail dot com. So we'll see how many answers we get on that. I'm, I'm going to be interested. Either I've seen the movie twice and I don't remember. Yeah. I've probably seen it about that many times and I can't remember. All right. Hey, if you want to come and support the show, go to patreon.com forward slash Disney Parks Podcast. And we have an ad free show. We have uh, good content over there. And uh, uh, we reward you with something when you sign up. And we'd like to thank our current Patreons James, Grant, Ernie, David. Sam, Jennifer, Ross, Ron, Jeremy, Willie, Michael, Mike, Cassandra, Katie, Eva, Katie, Mike, Corey, and Kathy. So thank you all for your patronage. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I can't get anybody to, to like, bite into that at yeah. all. You got to give them goodies. <laughs> I'd give them goodies if they wanted to, you know, get into it, but... Apparently, my goodies aren't enticing enough. Mm, yeah. I should probably offer food. That would probably work. <laughs> food or booze, I'm sure people sign up. <laughs> I'll send you a special beer from Nashville. <laughs> yeah. I'll send you a can of Cutwater Spirits canned cocktail. Yeah, there you go. There you go. All right. There was a, a bunch of permits again filed uh, for the Magic Kingdom. Now they're modifying these permits for the Tron life cycle, and it possibly removes the Main Street Theater. And that's where I was hoping to get my Broadway show that we're not going to get now. So, Aww. Now, it may come back, but usually once Disney cuts it off the list, it doesn't come back. So this, this is sad. I, I think uh, from what I heard around that... Uh, the movie theater possibly going away is they don't know how, like if they, if it holds 7,000 people, like they were trying to build it for, they don't know where 7,000 people will go when the movie empties, you know, to, they don't want, the idea was to get them off of main street and then they don't want to dump 7,000 people back onto main street. And I said, well, you, they would have used the, you know, the little entrance over by Tomorrowland. And dumped them out in Tomorrowland, right in the middle of the park. Yeah, why not do that, I wonder? Yeah, or you could have built another entrance to even further back in the park. You know, like, phantasmic has got, you know, two exits. One goes all the way to the front of the park, and one lets out on uh, Sunset. So they could have certainly come up with different uh, entrance and exit options, my guess. Anyway, according to these modified permits... Uh, published the other day, uh, the Disney Magic Kingdom is preparing for the upcoming uh, Tron Light Cycle run attraction, which will be slightly larger than initially expected, which I'm glad to hear. Yeah. I was thinking we, <laughs> we were going to get a cut-down version anyway. So, uh, But it might be cutting into the Tomorrowland Speedway. Yet again, something will take a little slice away from the Speedway. I... Either I want have, the whole speedway to be gone. 
<laughs> I, I sometimes agree with you, but it is a fun place for kids, I guess. You know. Uh, to me, I've, everything at Disney should be fun if you're a kid. Yeah, true. If it's not, man, what is wrong with you, child? <laughs> you, you know? <laughs> and it is a, a very, you know, it has to stop. People have to get on. People have to get off. It's a very slow-moving uh, attraction. It doesn't move fast because of it's a car that people have to yeah. get into. So. I don't think the throughput is uh, what they'd like it to be. I, I said they should have turned it into, you know, like Candy, not Candy Crush, but uh, from Wreck-It Ralph, something like uh-huh. that. That would have been fun. I'm sure they could have, you know, put virtual goggles on you and you could have seen virtual stuff, right? That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. But uh, we're not going to get any of that. Uh, the initial permits for the grading and the drainage that affected the area titled Magic Kingdom East Side Modification have been altered to include more Tomorrowland around the MK2 project, which is believed to be the upcoming Tron attraction, and remove the MK1 project, which was assumed to be the Main Street Theater. So, uh, The MK2 project now looks to include a portion of the Tomorrowland Speedway track, and according to some engineering reports, the phase development will include 3.4 acre building coverage uh, and permits of construction will expire on 2022. So one year past the uh, deadline. So uh, there's a lot of construction going on back there now. If you go past the you know, Bay Lake Tower, uh, you know, there are construction walls up and they're digging and plowing and moving along. So. Um, I'm I'm just interested, you know, if you look on a Google map, per se, and you look at the area, it's kind of tight back there. Uh, it's going to be on the other side of the rail tra- a railroad uh, track, which will be interesting because people are going to probably have to go over uh, the railroad track to get to this Tron coaster. Um, hmm. So it'll be interesting how they figure this all out back there. It seems like it's going to be a lot of a lot of moving parts to trying to figure out how to, you know, put that there. Yeah. Because that concept drawing definitely shows stairs going up and over. Uh, It'll be interesting how they're going to get all the strollers, scooters, and wheelchairs up and over. Not happening. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, you got to stay here. (laughs) Stay here. You could be like, uh, you could be like the people over in Disneyland that do things like, uh, I was reading a story from a friend of mine. She, uh, her company is City Strollers out in California. She got a phone call once from the police because somebody who had rented their stroller had decided that it was a good idea for them to ride an attraction and leave the toddler alone in the stroller. Wow. That's mm-hmm. nice. That's really special. Oh, yeah. She's got some crazy stories of things that she's seen happen. Wow. In the the parks in California, I just I cannot wrap my head around why you would do that to your kid. Yeah, well, I remember working security. And I was in the uh, Epcot. I was I think I was in the I was in the Epcot parking lot on one side. Somebody was on the other side, and I heard over the radio that they had two kids in the car. Uh, the parents got so excited when the tram pulled up that the parents. <laughs> Went and got on the tram and left the two kids in the car. <laughs> so the tram driver had to bring them back to get their kids. How does that happen? They got a, the parents got excited, got on the tram and said, you know, I guess they said, kids, come on. And they didn't get out of the car fast enough. And none of the parents turned around and the tram took off. And uh, kids there and parents, uh, you know, at the front of the park. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Some things that people do with their kids, it's like, it's like you can turn around and replace them if something happens to right. them, you know? They right. just, right. oh my gosh, that's just terrible. Sometimes it's worse than they treat their uh, dogs or cats. Yeah. You know, so. All right. Okay, so Star Wars fans, this story you are going to enjoy so at disney springs starting on may 24th you will be able to pick up a free solo 
a Star Wars story button. Of course, this is going to be while supplies last because that's always how it works. Mm -hmm. Um, But the location is going to be Star Wars Galactic Outpost, (laughs) the Star Wars Trading Post, and the AMC 24 Theater will Mm -hmm. be participating locations where you can pick up this button it is going to be similar to when they did the rogue one a star wars story back in 2016 uh these complimentary buttons of course are going to run out quickly so the sooner you can get there to get them the better it is for you um cast members will be allowed to wear these buttons on their costumes between may 24th and 27th, as long as it does not exceed their two pin or button minimum maximum requirement. Yeah, well, well. yeah, I think these are going to go quick. I don't think. Oh yeah. Stick around. Yeah, and I will uh, say this: uh, I said I saw Deadpool two this weekend. And Did you like it? I loved it. It it's really for adults. It's rated R, but of it, course, it is super funny. Super, super, super uh, entertaining and funny. Yeah. Uh, I hope they make a Deadpool 3, 4, 5 because, because these things are very funny. I enjoy them, you know. I do, too. I haven't seen the most recent one, mm-hmm. but I, I liked it when I, you know, when I saw the first one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, Josh Brolin plays uh, Cable, and one of the funniest things was... <laughs> Deadpool calls him Thanos. <laughs> it's like, oh my god! Oh, that's awesome! It's hysterical. It's hysterical. Uh, there is it's so many. Yeah, I, I think I have to go see it again because I am sure I was laughing so hard at stuff that I probably missed the next line, um, which was probably just as funny. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, the next story seems to be very controversial. I posted this on uh, Disney by the Numbers, and uh, gosh, I really did not think I was going to get that many comments. But this thing is like blowing up on my Facebook. I think, oh, wow. Uh, I think everybody's got an opinion on one side or the other side of the story. Uh, but as we all know, John uh, you know, took a little sabbatical, a little leave of absence for his discretions. Uh, but now uh, Disney is thinking about, you know, his six months are up or coming uh, close to being up. You know, what are we going to do? How are we going to uh, take him back into the fold? Uh, his six months uh, started back in November of 2017. Uh, according to the Wall Street Journal, uh, executives at the Walt Disney have a discussion on bringing Lasseter back to work in a capacity that reduces his supervisory ability but would still allow him to utilize his creative influences without the liability that could come from uh, him being in charge of 1,000 employees. Interesting. Uh, as of now, Disney has not given any indicators as to whether or not Lasseter will return uh, May 21st, which is today, uh, at this recording, uh, which is a six-month mark. Uh, Pixar Animation Studio and Walt Disney Animation have managed to adopt in operating in his absence, although, according to some employees... They are not aware of who will lead them in the future. This poses a tricky situation for the entertainment giant giant as they decide what to do. He was also the chief creative officer at Disney Studios, uh, and Lasseter led many of the company's most valuable franchises, including uh, Toy Story, uh, Finding Nemo. Uh, Following Disney's acquisition of Pixar in 2005, he led the revival of the Disney Animation Studio which was responsible for such hits as Frozen and Zootopia. Um, He also advised on other things like uh, the parks. I think he was the creative officer for the parks. Uh, Did a lot of the, you know, that's probably the reason we have a Toy Story Land, a Cars Land. Uh, You know, he's channeling those energies that way. Uh, Some current and former employees of Pixar have reportedly told media outlets, including the Wall Street Journal, that Lasseter routinely hugged or otherwise touched them without consent. Listen, he was Lotto. He was a hugging bear. He hugged. (laughs) You know, it's gotten to the point where 
I mean, I will say living now that I've been in the South for what, like 26 years, Mm. people hug like that's not an unusual thing. You know, you don't go, hey, can I have a hug? You're like, oh, good to see you. And you just like hug people. Right. So. I mean, if you come to. I'm not saying he's not guilty of anything. I don't know. Yeah. But it. It just makes it difficult, you know, I mean, to know whether somebody's uncomfortable or not, it's kind of sad that you have to almost ask now at times if you can shake a woman's hand because it might be seen as making an unwanted advance right Right. i'll give you a warning i don't know what do i don't as a man i don't know what to say like what what did she do do now yeah do you have to ask can i shake your hand can i give you a hug you know especially when you know and other countries that would even be a crazy thing if you had yeah, you well, know that yeah, was going on yeah in japan they don't hug <laughs> you know i mean i think you him. know i see Raphael in being that his family is from cuba what do you do you you kiss on the cheek you know that's yeah. just yeah. it's an everyday thing yeah. so yeah. yeah i uh listen if you come to a disney parks podcast meetup you're probably going to get a hug from me so be prepared to say, I'm not going to ask you. I'm probably just going to do it, and that'll be that. Um, Wear a shirt that says, I do not accept warm yeah, hugs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what they should blast over is an uh, Olaf shirt. Oh, oh gosh. I don't even – oh, my. Yeah, I've, I've, got one, I've got one kid who – we have – you know, I work with 85 children, and a lot mm. of them, like, will walk up and just – get a hug and some of them you know are pretty much my size and they're only in like first grade and so they'll about knock me over so some of them i've had to say you need to let me know if you want to hug because you could hurt me you could knock me down right and uh but i have one little girl because she likes to grab your leg and stuff like that like hug on weird parts of your body you know like here let me hug your foot so i've told her i was like you have to ask me for a hug so she will walk up and go can i have a warm hug that's what she said yeah (laughs) she asked specifically for a warm hug like i have an option if i'm cold you know right right (laughs) you know if i was disney this is what i would do and listen i'm not bob Iger. you know he's he's got Bigger fish to fry, a lot of assets to protect. But I would still put him in charge of Pixar. I'd put him in charge of the animation studio. But like this article from the Wall Street Journal saying, no direct reports. Uh, You know, put Brad Bird or somebody in charge of Pixar, pick somebody over at the animation studio. And they kind of dot line uh, to, you know, Lassiter so he can be the creative genius he is and point them in the right direction with story and content and things like that. Uh, and then the same thing at the parks. You know, nobody reports to him in the parks, but he's as a, a dotted line to the the presidents of uh, Disneyland and Walt Disney World uh, to give uh, creative input, you know, yeah. on, on things to do. This way, there's no liability. You know, they say, listen, nobody reports to him. Yes, he's going to have interaction uh, at uh, events and things like that. Uh and maybe for a while he shouldn't go to any premieres uh, because I hear that's where a lot of his uh, uh, indiscretions came. When he got drunk, he was hugging and grabbing everybody. And if he does come, maybe there's got to be no alcohol and somebody's got to kind of, I'm going to say, babysit him, you know? Yeah. Um, to make sure he doesn't. That means stupid. no more Trader Sam's for you, John. <laughs> that way I can go to the bathroom. Oh, God, that was so, so long ago. <laughs> yeah, like, what, 10 years ago? When, it was, what, 2011, right? Yeah, well, that was a long time ago. Listen, I, I would really like to see Mr. Lasseter come back. I I know that probably pisses a lot of people off, but uh, I, I really think that he is a creative uh, genius with a lot of this stuff. Um, I mean, you give him stipulations that should yeah. you do this, this is what happens. I mean... Yeah. Because it would be a sh- it would be a shame for him to not have input into 
Pixar because Pixar has done fantastic and it only has because he's such a creative genius. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. Definitely. So we'll you just put him on like parole. Yeah. You're on Disney parole. Yeah. This is house arrest. Here you go. This is how it's working. Maybe he's gotta get peed and drug tested, you know, randomly just to make sure he's not on the sauce anymore. I don't know. I mean he owns a vineyard. I don't know what he would do there, but uh, <laughs> no more drinking your wine. Yeah, I, I guess. I guess. I don't know. So, all right, let's uh, move on before people get pissed at us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Speaking of drinking, Rick's Sports Bar and Grill is now open at Coronado Springs. Hey, soft opening. They updated Rick's Lounge. Yeah. Uh, it now accepts reservations. You have lunch and dinner, mm -hmm. and you can get uh, reservations are accepted starting June 2nd and beyond. Uh, appetizer menu is going to feature things like a lobster slider, which is 18. It's served on a Parker House roll. <laughs> There's a veggie lettuce wrap for $12. Wachos which are $12. It's a crispy waffle fries topped with queso, blanco, bacon, and scallions. Ooh, that sounds delicious. Yeah. Short rib chili for $8. That sounds really good. Corn chowder. They're going to have two different types of salads. There's going to be a wedge salad for 10 and a Rick's salad for $9. Mm. It's going to feature artisanal blend Greens tossed in a honey orange vinaigrette with roasted beets, tomato, cucumber, and goat cheese. The only thing that salad sounds like it needs is some like those like honeyed candied mm. candied pecans on it. Yeah, yeah. For those who like sal uh, sandwiches, they're gonna have a Rick's grilled cheese for fourteen. There's a turkey and brie sandwich for fourteen, and for sixteen forty nine, you can get a Rick's mahi Reuben, hmm. which features pastrami seasoned mahi and beer braised sauerkraut. Now that sounds quite interesting. Yeah. All the sandwiches are served with your choice of waffle fries, sweet potato fries, green apple cabbage slaw, or beets and goat cheese. I like that you don't have your, like, normal, yeah. you know, boring side items to choose from. Right. One of my favorite things is to take sweet potato fries and dip them in honey mustard. Right. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. It's, uh, when did a grilled cheese sandwich become $14? It's cheese and bread i'm wondering what kind of cheese is on there it better be something really really good and really really rare yes it cannot be american cheese yeah. you know craft singles like right. no 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 not yeah. for 14 dollars. like it needs to be like brioche with some brie and you know something like that as uh Wahlburgers calls it the uh government uh cheese <laughs> yeah no it better not be the government cheese yeah. yeah. Did I ever tell you my Rick's uh, story? No. All right. We went there for a meetup, uh, and I had a weird hunkering for a melon ball. So the server comes over. Wait. Yes. Yeah. And but continue with the story, but I do know it because yeah. if everybody else hasn't he heard it, they need to hear this because it's crazy. Yeah. So I ordered a melon ball, which is uh, Medora, vodka, pineapple, and orange juice. And the uh, uh, server said, yeah, fine. I'm not sure what that is, but she writes it down. Uh, and then she comes back with, like, these mini carafes. Uh, one had vodka, uh, one had Medora, one had orange juice, uh, and one had pineapple juice. I'm like, I, I, they're supposed to be, like, mixed up in, in a drink o over ice. So she says, oh, I'll, I'll, bring, I'll bring you a glass. I'm like, what is this, like DIY cocktails? <laughs> so, fine, she brings me a glass with ice. I make my own uh, a Medora. Uh, we go to leave. Uh, she brings over the bill, and it's like $35. I'm like, for a melon ball? She charged me individually for uh, each of the items. So, so then I said, listen, I'm, I'm not paying that. So I went to the bar. I said, uh, you're going to have to get the manager. I said to the manager, listen, I ordered a melon bowl, and I got this. I got four different things. I had to make it, and now she's charged me $35. I'm not going to pay that. 
she goes, well, the, you know, we don't have melon ball in the in the thing, so she just. I don't. I don't want to know the excuses. Just sixteen dollars is what I'm willing to pay for a drink at Disney. So figure that out. <laughs> Any, I don't. I don't know. I think he just comped it. I think he said, "Don't worry about it. It's on us or whatever." So I but, just. Yeah, that's my. You know, at story. that point, as a manager, you and I both worked in restaurants for several years. The mm-hmm. proper response to that is, you know, I'm so sorry. She, you know, she just, right. you know, didn't know how to ring it up. She. Right, don't worry about it. We'll fix this. No problem. Yeah. That's the proper. Don't make an excuse that way. Right. You know, if you're, if there's something like that, that happens, just say, oh, she didn't know what it was. It was a mistake. We've got this. Not like, well, we don't have that on the menu. Oh, really? You're a lounge. Right. That is your thing to know that. Just right. like, um, the issue that I had at Paddlefish. Oh yeah. Which. I love paddlefish, Mm -hmm. you know, prior to the last visit, which was just up at the rooftop bar. I mean, I've been there with three times now since it's changed over. Excellent Mm -hmm. food, great service, except Mm -hmm. for whatever was going on that night. And the guy told me, you know, I asked, what are your beers on tap? And I said, what kind of beer is that? And he says, a dark beer. And it comes out the color of a Pilsner. No, that is not. Like, look at that. How can you tell me when you look at that that you think that's a dark beer? (laughs) You know? Just sometimes I'm like, you know, I get it if you're young and you are just, you're 18 years old and this is your first serving job or bar job. Right. But this is Disney. Yeah. And this is Paddlefish, a right. specialty dining experience. Yeah. Overpriced. You should know these things. Like, you should know that Cabernet Sauvignon is a red and Sauvignon Blanc is a white. You know, things like that are common knowledge and should be at 18. Right. I mean, my first table waiting job was when I was 19, and I quickly learned all that stuff because. I don't want to look stupid, sure. you know? Sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, I was the owner's son of a restaurant. I definitely had to know those things, so I didn't look mm-hmm. stupid. You, know. you probably knew, knew them long before you were old enough to drink. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So just uh, be careful out there, you know, because not everybody is uh, smart or on the ball, shall we say. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. All right, last but not least, let's do some headline news. Uh, All right, so uh, apparently Lucas, a president, uh, Miss Kennedy, uh, teases Lando Carissian, a Star Wars spinoff. What? Yeah, so uh, I think she said at one of the press or media events that there may be a Lando spinoff. I mean, we haven't even, the movie hasn't even premiered yet, and we're spinning things off it. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, interesting. So we'll see what happens. Uh, ESPN Worldwide uh, Sports Complex is going to host the 2022 Special Olympics Summer Games. I am glad it is not 2021 during the 50th because that would just be mayhem and chaos. Oh, yeah. No, uh, that would be the, the beyond point. a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Disney launched a new mobile game called Disney Heroes Battle Mode. So I guess your heroes can go into battle. Have you played it yet? No, I haven't. Okay. I haven't yet. I'm still, thanks to you, hooked on the Disney emoji game. I'm sorry. (laughs) You're the one who got me into it because you kept sending me these messages (laughs) that had all these Disney emojis. And I was like, oh, I've got to get this game. Yeah. And I'm still hooked on that game. Uh, I'm like, oh. I've got to, I've got to get, I've got to get Hades, you know? (laughs) Yeah, I got stuck. I I couldn't, I couldn't get any more things. I was like, all right, that's enough. Well, they keep coming out with new stuff for you to get. Like this week now you can get Hades, but you can't, it's not like you can buy him. You have to like get so far into that particular thing to get it. Yeah, I know. And I'm a big fan of Hades. So I'm like, oh man. Sorry, I put that monkey on your back. Uh, hey, Disney uh, DVC members, there are going to be two mem- two 
member cruises in 2019. Not one, but two. So uh, get up early. It's uh, I think they said 320 points per person per day. So get out your DVC wallet for that. Ooh. Uh, yeah, it's very pricey. It, it's cheaper to buy the cruise than it's going. But they give you a lot of swag and just usually fun things to do. Uh, California Adventure is introducing a new menu at Flo's V8 Cafe. So I have to get out there, I think. And uh, check out some of the new stuff. I, I really should have gone for Pixar Fest. I don't know what I'm doing here recording this. <laughs> should be really a Pixar Fest. Uh, the Victory Way entrance of uh, Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort is temporarily closing beginning May 29th. I think, uh, I think they're going to be doing some entrance changes on uh, either Bonnet Creek and Victoria Way. Um, so uh, just, you know, if you're going to the resort, pay attention to the... Uh, detour signs. Uh, and then the new Disney Springs parking maps are available. And these are weird. Uh, they point out the parking areas like the orange garage, the lime garage, the strawberry lot, the mango lot. And then they have directions on how to get there. I'm thinking, well, why are you handing these out at Disney Springs? I should have been parked by now, right? <laughs> Now, they're also, I think, in the resort. I'm confused. Like, are they having people who get that don't know how to lost? Park? Yeah. Or know. what? When they drive there, they don't know where to park. Two big parking structures. Pick one of those or the little lots next to them. Uh, and then we're hearing that the other third parking garage uh, may be split, maybe half cast members and half uh, guests. And then they're going to build another walkway. Uh, from that parking garage to uh, Disney Springs. I wonder what that parking garage is going to be called. I don't know. They're running out of fruits. Do they have grapefruit? Uh, I can't remember. I know there's mango, strawberry, orange, lime. I don't know if they have grapefruit. There may be a small grapefruit area over by uh, Cirque. Damn, I, I, I'd have to go back and look at my parking maps. <laughs> that's uh, hilarious yeah so if you're not sure where to park uh, Disney will uh, help you with that I'm still waiting for them to charge for that uh, and the last thing is we want to remind everybody is uh, June on this podcast is going to be Toy Story Month oh yeah, I have Toy Story shirts and hats and I don't know what John's going to be doing probably just laughing at me uh, we may even talk about Toy Story merchandise. I got uh, some new goodies downstairs, too. So it's going to be Toy Story Month on this uh, damn show. Finally. Very cool. Yeah. So, And once again, Kristen, tell everybody where they can find you. Dining at Disney.com on social media, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Dining at Disney. Um, on Apple Podcast and Stitcher you can find the Dining at Disney podcast. And you guys have a live show now, right? WDW Tiki Room is doing live shows. Um, it's been on Sundays because our show airs on our on Monday on Sorcerer Radio, WDW Tiki Room. So we're uh, doing it live on Facebook so you can join in and chat with us and ask questions or whatever it is and going to do that that ran uh way into my bedtime <laughs> i bet usually it wouldn't be that that late but oh, it okay. happened to be yesterday oh, okay. a little too late yeah. uh highly uh say if you want to know about disney food you have to go uh, check out her website it's got tons of great information there and uh, al john uh has great stuff about star wars and marvel he's got i don't know how many podcasts he's doing right now three four five <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's like see, it's machine. down to Morals? one, Star Wars, one, Just geek? Tiki Room, just Tiki Room, wow, wow, his life's too busy, wow, he's like a podcast addict, did he do that cold turkey, <laughs> well, it had to be, yeah, work, work has been very demanding of him the past few months, so it's kind of been, all right, Sounds good. This is, this is what you have to do because, well, that pays the bills. Yeah. This is, you know, fun. Yeah. So. Yeah. 
We you know, we you got to adult sometimes, right? Yeah. We all can't be little and gentle and quit our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us have to work. All right. Uh, go check out Dining at Disney and WW Tiki Room on Facebook and uh, Sorcerer Radio. Uh, they do a lot of great things, a lot of great shows over there, too. So I uh, highly recommend that you uh, check them out. Uh, don't forget to go visit us at DisneyParksPodcast.com. Uh, we're on the Twitter at Disney Podcaster. Uh, we post uh, the Facebook show on YouTube, so go visit us at YouTube uh, forward slash Disney Parks Podcast, I believe. Um, we started up our Instagram a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. So uh, go check us out on Instagram. I think we're Disney Podcast, Disney Parks Podcast. I think we're Disney Parks Podcast. Um, and that's it, as we'd like to say right here. We'll see you in the parks. The Disney Parks Podcast is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company. All Disney parks, attractions, lands, shows, event names, etc. are registered trademarks of the Walt Disney Company. Like a out of the blue Fate steps in and sees you through